Hey folks, boy, I tell you what, we've been here in Missouri, Fredericktown, Missouri, and you can't believe it. We had a great time training mules, but I got to meet my brother in the Lord and say hi to him again, Toby Cook. Now, Toby's not a big, big guy. He's a very big guy, and he's been riding one of my saddles for about three years. And I'd like to have Toby come over here and visit with you and tell you a little bit about what he's experienced in the past three years with his saddle. Get, be sure to go back a little bit and see the size of this guy compared to me. <laughs> I, I, you know, Toby, now I'm standing up, but you can see he's about three of me. He's a pretty good sized fella. So Toby, my brother in the Lord, you not only know Christ as your savior, but you're a mule rider, right? Yeah. Now tell me a little bit about about your mules that you had, the saddles that you had. Give me an idea. You kind of told me before, but let's go ahead and tell the folks so they can see it. Um, started with a, uh, a Circle Y Park and Trail. Uh, didn't really get along good with it. Couldn't get it to tighten up on my mule. Uh, nearly cut my mule in two. Trying to tighten the girth enough to hold the saddle on. Um, traded for a different Circle Y saddle. Great saddles just didn't fit the mule. Um, traded and got a Billy Cook, and had the same issues. And what kind of issues was it? Uh, he would grunt going downhill, and I later found out through Steve that was the saddle sliding forward and continuing to cut his wind off more. I had his girth way, way too tight, trying to do a job, trying to force the saddle to fit. Um, I got bad scalding marks on my mule's scapula, scapula right area. behind the scapula area. Um, gave him a saddle sore on his back and I gave up and I called every saddle manufacturer in the Mules and More magazine. I got one call back and what three days later we played phone tag and I bought a saddle and a breeching and a saddle pad and two cinches and a press Color and basically every... he's got a slick fork saddle is what he's got since he's not exactly a little guy he need to have a saddle to hold him into place and one of the things about it too is his saddle would roll when he tried to get on it but that's, now that's why I kept tightening it up thinking I wasn't tightening my saddle enough yes sir yeah so now you've been doing okay you're on your second mule now yeah. And the saddle uh, been working out good on the second mule. He's a little smaller than that other one. We had to readjust again a little bit today. You helped me get uh, get my britching and, and everything more in line. Um, I can still ride 20 miles and come in with a loose girth. And, you know, people run up and they want to know, you know, oh, before you get off, you got a loose girth. Said, yeah, it'll be fine. No, I mean, it's like loose. Like, you can see daylight under it. I said, it'll, it'll be just fine. So... I had to uh, get off and on my mule several times on trail rides just because people can't believe that as big as I am, I can get on and off a saddle without having the, the girth cutting the mule's wind off. Yeah, makes it pretty nice. So, so, so now he's got a new mule, gated mule, and uh, it was your other mule gated too? He was out of a Tennessee Walker, but I never could get him to gate. Okay. That's the reason I bought this one. So this one here is gating really good, really good for you. Yeah, well, good. Well, awesome. Well, Toby, my brother, it's good to seeing you again. Thank you so much for coming to the clinic. Glad to be here. Always proud to come and watch and learn. Yes, sir. Well, we had a good time this weekend. Had a lot of mules, seen a lot of folks. Yeah. Met some friends. and Yeah. Mule folks are kind of different. You know, we all get along good. It's a good deal, you know. It sure is. All right. Bless